What's up, everybody? First of all, this is just dope. Justin, what's going on with Red Eye and TED Talks and Watts? This is amazing. I think this is, this is brilliant. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to take you through a little bit of my story, and hopefully it will inspire and motivate you all here today. But before we start, how many musicians, artists, singers, writers, any in the music industry in the room? Okay, good. How many, how many into tech? Cool. How many into sports? Okay. Well, it all works hand in hand, so hopefully this will inspire you. So, let me tell you about myself. So, when I was in high school, and I was a junior in high school, I come from a, a, a town called Atlantic City, New Jersey. And in Atlantic City, there was no outlet for music, no recording studios. It just wasn't a place where you could be heard, you could be discovered, nothing cool about music in Atlantic City. And so when I was in high school as a junior, I was known as the kid in school that always had a, back, a backpack or a book bag, and I had my books in it, but I also had a little drum machine in it. And I would take this drum machine and I would always make beats, whether it was in lunch, you know, or any time I had a chance to, to sit down and make a, a beat, I would do it. And so people knew me for that. So I had this one teacher, it was in 11th grade, my history teacher. Uh, her name was Mrs. Blank, I'm not gonna say it. And Mrs. Blank, uh, she didn't really like me. And not because I, I wasn't a bad kid, but it was more so like, you know, my focus was a lot on my music and not on history. And um, I remember going and walking to class, and I had my bag, and I walk in, and she says, come up to me, and I go up to her. She gives me this newspaper clipping, and the newspaper clipping said, black people will be extinct by the year 2000. And I'm looking at the paper like, what? And then she says, so you need to stop making music because you're not going to be that anyway. You won't, you, you won't make a career out of this anyway. And I'm just like, I'm floored. Here I am, a young student. Hope, I'm looking for people to inspire me, to motivate me, to push me into greatness, not to put me down. And I remember leaving her class and going to my guidance counselor and telling, showing him the paper and him saying, she really gave you this? I said, yeah, she gave me this. And he was floored. And I walk back into the class later on after class is over, and I crumble up the paper. This is in the month of January, my junior year. I crumble up the paper, I throw it in the trash, and I looked at her and I said, not only will we be here in the year 2000, I said, but in fact, I won't even be in this class this April. Listen, from my mouth to God's ears, I said that and I had no plan, nothing going on. I just, that's what came out of my mouth. Fast forward to April. I write this cheesy letter to an A&R executive in New York and I had a cassette tape, and I put the music on the cassette tape, and I sent it off. Now, anybody in the music business knows you're not supposed to send any unsolicited material, or they just take it and they throw it in a garbage can. For, for months, I used to catch buses to New York City and give A&Rs my cassettes, and they would just throw it in the trash can right in front of my face all the time. But for some reason, I don't know, I had faith, I had hope. And I gave this, I sent this letter with this cassette, and a guy by the name of James Jones Jr., who worked at Uptown Records at the time, Uptown Records was responsible for like Notorious B.I.G. and Mary J. Blige, and that whole, that's that whole 90s Uptown New York movement. And when I sent this tape, all I had was faith. And this guy pressed play, and he listened, he read the letter, and he called us. And he said, I normally don't do this. I usually just throw the music away, but I heard something in this music 
and I want you to come to New York tomorrow to, to meet with me. So me and my father went to New York. Long story short, I moved in with him in April. In April. So if you guys missed the story of the part where I said I would be out of that class in April, I was homeschooled from that point on. And I was literally living in Hackensack, New Jersey, and now working for Uptown Records. And the journey began. And what I learned from that experience was, the most important thing from that experience for me was, was faith. I knew I had the ability, I knew that I had a gift, I knew I had a talent, but I couldn't just sit down and watch my potential chill out. I can't even, if that's me over there, if that's me over there, I couldn't just sit and be like, Man, you got something special. You're really good. What are you going to do with it? Can't do that. And when I look in this room, I can tell this eye. When I look at people's eyes, you see special. You see potential. You see things. And sometimes you just need to go. Go with what you feel. A lot of times what we want to do is we want to make excuses. We want to say, well, there's no outlet. You know, I live in a city where it can't happen. I live in a town where it can't happen. Listen, you have the ability to be whatever you want to, you want to be. You have the ability to do whatever you want to do. You just got to go get it. It's not going to come. It's not going to come to you. It's not going to be like, here it is. It's on, it's on a silver platter. Take it. No, you have to go get it. And the reason why you have it more than ever now is because of technology. Because of technology, you have it now more than ever. Listen, I'm talking to you about cassette tapes. Half, it, half of the people in this room don't know what a cassette tape is. It's true. How many in this room have owned a cassette tape in their life? You actually owned a cassette tape. Y'all are some liars. <laughs> you never owned a cassette tape. You saw one. Man, if you did, though, that's kind of cool. So we've progressed in our, in our world very quickly, and technology has made it possible now for us to be able to have a different type of impact at rapid speed. So think about it from this standpoint. I had to catch the bus. I had to get a job at the local diner making somewhere around 36 bucks, take that money, invest it into a $23 bus ticket, do it again and again, catch the bus to New York, stand outside of record companies hoping to get discovered. Someone would take my cassette tape and play it, but they would just throw it in the garbage. But now because of technology, I have the opportunity to be able to see talent, hear talent, right? Because of technology. There was a guy about two years ago, who could make every excuse in the book. He lived, he lived in a city where he had no opportunity, but he was an incredible musician. And guess what? It just so happened I heard him on Instagram. Instagram. And I was, I was like, wow, this, is, this, is, this guy is really good. So I, I got a hold of this guy. I said, we need to bring him to California. I want to meet him. Flew him out to California. I said, man, you want to come do some work? He said, man, you have no idea. In his first years, he made six figures. No one cannot tell me that we do not have the opportunity to, to progress quicker than ever with the potential that we have. Why? Because we have technology at our fingertips. We have mobile phones. You can build apps. You can, you can post things now and get discovered. We have all of this at, the, at our fingertips, but we have to have the drive and the willingness to want to be great. It's funny because when you, when you think about driving past a graveyard site and you look at a grave and you think to yourself, man, all of the potential that's in this grave. It could have been the next president it could have been the next Facebook. It could have been the next TED Talks. 
could have been the next LeBron James. But a lot of people don't take that opportunity to, to tap into, into their potential. And it's all because of fear. So how do we step out of fear and into faith? How do we step out of fear and into faith? Well, I think it starts up here. It's all in the mind. It's all in the mind, right? My son is 10 years old, and he's a golfer and a history major. I can stand, I can stand history, but he loves history, right? And he's a golfer. So we have an event. He plays in the U.S. Kids Tour. And we have an event. So there's this huge tree right in front of him. And I say, RJ, go over that tree. And he looks at me. He goes, I can't. Negative. That word cannot be used. If you want to step into any part of greatness, the word can't cannot exist. I can't, Daddy. Well, what do you mean you can't? RJ, hit the ball over the tree. I can't. Well, what are you going to do, RJ? I'm going to play it to the left. Go. Steps up. Hits the ball to the left. The ball goes over the fence, out of bounds. I look at that as, man, if you would have tried to go over the tree and you didn't succeed, you would still be in better shape than losing the stroke because it went over the fence. Because you, you, you let fear conquer that moment. Fast forward, a year later, I've been working on him, working with him on confidence and conquering and having faith. Because faith can allow you to achieve things that you can't even see or believe. So we go back to play a course. And what happens? He's on fire. The day is going great. Birdie. He had three birdies in a row to start the, to start the day off. I'm like, whoo, it's one of those days. We get to the fifth hole, and there's this tree. And this tree is huge. And I look at RJ, and I said, RJ, what are you going to do? He said, what did David in the Bible do? It's a 10-year-old telling me that he was nine at that time. Say, so what did David in the Bible? Anybody know what David did? He conquered, a, conquered Goliath. And that tree was his Goliath. So I said, RJ, go over the tree. Picks up his club. He has a 200 yard drive right over the tree. Nine years old at the time. 200 yards right over the tree. Birdie that hole. Faith will take you places. It will allow you to have an imagination that you don't even think you have. You'll see things differently because of faith. Because what happens is it shrinks the opposition. It makes the obstacle come down. So when he's looking at the tree now, the tree that appears to be 60, 70, 80 feet, I don't know how high that tree was, as high as the ceiling. Now because of faith, now, because he has faith and he doesn't have fear, it now looks like a little bush. It now looks this small. And that's the same thing in life. Once we have that faith and we start putting together all the things that we are able to do, whether it's being a musician, whether it's being an artist, a singer, a songwriter, someone in tech, someone who wants to start a real estate company, whatever it is, once you add the component of faith, into your life. Everything that seemed difficult, that seemed hard, it shrinks. It becomes so much smaller. So here you got a little boy. You got this little boy named David, right? And he's looking at this big giant called Goliath. 
He's like, yo. And everybody thinks of Goliath as this big old creature that David is not going to be able to conquer. But how did David see it? This is how David saw it. Check this out. David sees Goliath as, man, I could actually turn around and I could take this little rock and I can go like this. Because he's so big, I can't miss him. He's so big, I can't miss him. I can conquer him with my eyes closed. He didn't see him as that huge obstacle anymore because of faith. He saw it as, oh, that's a big target that I can't miss. And that's how it's supposed to be in life. No matter what we want to do in life, you put your mind to it, you add faith to it, and then you accomplish it. The same teacher who told me that black people would be extinct by the year 2000. So give up what you're doing. It's not going to happen anyway. Well, four years later, I was in the studio with Michael Jackson. I, wasn't, I just turned 20 years old. Four years later. This. But you know why? Because the faith was activated in my life. The very thing that someone told me that I would not be able to do, I didn't go home and say, yo, it's where I live. I can't make it because I live over here. Yo, I'm good, but I'm not that good. Oh, she told me I'm not going to make it. She told me we're not going to exist. No, I used it as fuel to say I'm destined for greatness. Because if someone is telling you you're not going to make it, believe me when I tell you God has another plan for your life. Take all of the things that you have, all of the greatness that you have inside of you, and activate faith. Faith is not seeing, it's knowing that you have the ability to conquer anything that's in front of you and be all that you can be and be great at anything you want to be. My time is up. I want to thank Justin, Red Eye, TED Talks. City of Watts and all of you people for allowing me to share this stage for this moment. <laughs>